we're in London. We're in zone two. Um, that's inner London. This is a little muse called Stories Muse. The shortage of residential development means it's, a, it's prime for redevelopment. Her main uh, objective was to have a comfortable house that she could live and retire in. She wanted a small house and uh, for it to be built pretty cheaply in the region of about £250,000. There was a big challenge with planning. Uh, the Campbell Society and it's in a conservation area, there's lots of hurdles to overcome. The street is difficult to access, so there's lots and lots of accessibility issues. And we had to give the building a, some sort of a small industrial element. Also, we had to bring in a lot of light. So the plot is no wider than five metres. That was a challenge. You know, you've got a footprint of around 50 square metres. And the other challenge here was we needed off-street parking. We managed to do that by designing a small parking space, which uh, was really designed for an electric car. Once we decided on the modular construction, that allowed us to go down the passive house route. Well, in this particular case, we used SIPS panels, structural insulated panels. And I know, because I've done this on lots of other buildings, that that's a very good system for working with passive houses. The issue really was with the SIPS panels, uh, how you brought it to site. We, we dug the foundations, so that was all done fairly straightforwardly. A simple foundation, it's a sort of a hybrid system of a raft and as well as a, um, strip footings. We then um, had the house come in in three lifts effectively. So we had the ground floor come in on small little trucks, then we had the first floor and then we had the roof is lightweight, it's easy to build, it's easy to man manipulate and to move. The biggest problem we had was the lack of room on the site because where do you store it all? You're building a house, where do you put it all? It was in the middle of this room, you know, all the panels as we were going up. So that was really difficult. Hence SIPS panels were chosen, that's really the main reason why. Um, also the air tightness, also the cost. You know, the cost of the SIPS panels here for the entire build, yeah, it was about 60,000 quid. You know, to, to build the structural frame uh, in the SIPs, um, including the roof, it was around 60,000, somewhere along those lines. It's reasonable value. We have um, mainly London stock bricks around here or red rubbers, which are the red bricks that are used a lot. To reduce the thickness of the build-up of the walls, which was very important for us, um, to create as much room as we possibly could internally, we had to reduce the thickness of, of that brick so a brick slip is effectively a brick tile and then you stick the bricks on <laughs> onto, like tiling effectively. It's quite simple, it's also quite quick because you haven't got lots of brick layers, you can use tilers to do the external bricking. They're not cheaper than normal bricks, they cost about the same. So it's, you're not getting any cost reduction but you're getting a, um, a benefit in terms of space. The other focus of the house itself is the compactness. Every space is well thought through. Um, every nook and cranny is utilised. So we've got the um, laundry area under the stairs. We've got the downstairs cloakroom, which is um, with lots of sliding doors. Um, there's sliding doors even here. These slide into the walls and you've got TVs and cupboards and all sorts of things here. In all, the building works quite well um, as a simple and elegant form without costing the earth. So it shows what can be done.